so as we've been studying about organization, we have learned many things even about competing. Now it is uh, time for us to consider Sabbath school. Sabbath school work. And uh, I will ask a question and answer it immediately. When did some meetings begin? They did not begin with the Israelites, neither did they begin with seventh day Adventists. They began with the reformers. And you make money a lot of us. When did Sabbath school begin? And again, we will see as we continue that these things did not begin with seventh day Adventists. But the mighty man as well began in the time of the reformers. So, what we are going to discuss is not something that has to be in the conference, but it is something that God sought to bring into the work of the, into the, work of, uh, the Christian church. So, uh, Sister White says in uh, my slide, is just calling forward. My computer is, seems to be running. I don't know why. It looks like a mirror of God. So we have the following. The Sabbath school work is important and all who are interested in the truth should endeavor to make it so all who have an interest in the truth, which I believe we all do, should endeavor to make the Sabbath school prosperous. Again, the Sabbath school work, the Sabbath school is an important branch of the missionary work, not only because it gives to young and old a knowledge of God's word, but because it awakens in them a love for its sacred truths and a desire to study them for themselves. Above all, it teaches them to regulate their lives by its holy teachings. So we see the Sabbath school is important, at least when this statement was written, the Sabbath school was important, and all who had a love for the truth were to endeavor to make it prosperous. So today, if you have a love for truth, each of us must endeavor to make it prosperous. But now the question is, that will answer which Sabbath school are we endeavoring to make prosperous? Or what is this thing that you're calling Sabbath school? That is what we are, are going to, to look at. So let us consider the following text as we proceed. In John chapter 6, verse 45, it is written in the prophets, they shall all be taught of God. Throughout the week up to this point, we have been saying that no one should be an independent atom. Yet the text seems to suggest some independence in religious thought. So we will not receive anything because it was taught to us by Brother X. So we will not go somewhere and say, you see, some taught us this and this, or weekly taught us this and this, but the principle given to us about religious subjects is they shall all be taught of God. So each person has a capacity to be taught of God. God has different channels that he's going to use, but each of us should be taught of God. How is it that you're going to be taught of God? We will uh, answer this as we proceed. But right now I want, uh, I want to bring up a few things, uh, a few things forward here, and then we will come back just a few things to help us. Just a few things to help us. Uh, let us read just some of the things that were written in, 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 in lessons sometimes back, and then we'll come back uh, and continue with the study. So in 1888, December 15, in the lesson it was written, commit to memory the verses in Peter which form the basis of this lesson. So what was the main concern with the lesson right at that time? Commit to memory the verses in Peter, which formed the basis of this lesson. In 1903, the third quarter, 
uh, the lesson was dealing with the book of the patients and it was uh, the lesson writer wrote seek to know what the book that is the book of patients says and means not what the lesson writer may mean his earnest desire is to open the book to all therefore study the book 1896, third quarter. Use the notes and suggestions only as a means of studying the text itself and do not allow the mind to be diverted by them from the study of the text. Otherwise, there are hindrances instead of help. There's constant danger of being diverted from the study of God's thought as expressed to us in his word to the study of what some man the lesson writer has thought about God's thought. So again, here's the lesson writer saying, but he's saying the notes, we will see what, what it means by the notes. The notes will not divert you from the study of the text. So if you're studying Ephesians and he has given a thought, your main duty is to concentrate on what? In Ephesians. I think this is the last one. Uh, uh, let me read this and the other, and then we'll proceed. You do not stand in need of what somebody, the lesson writer, thinks. What you want is knowledge, and the Lord giveth wisdom. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. You may question the Lord often, for he giveth to all liberality and a braided not. So all of us who are studying the lesson we told, we can question the Lord often, not we can question the lesson writer. Yeah. And uh, I think finally, let me read these two as we proceed. There's no better way to express the thoughts expressed, presented in the scriptures than in the very words of the scripture. And teachers are therefore urged to require that the answers to the questions shall be given in the exact words of the text. So the lesson has questions, and you don't say, I think. But in the exact words of the scripture, you should answer those questions. Uh, just when, in, when we were beginning, we saw Sister White saying, the Sabbath school awakens in them a love for its sacred truths and a desire to study it for themselves. So when it is properly conducted, everyone in the church will have a desire to study the, the lesson for themselves. There's no one, I lost the, 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 the reference to this one, but uh, you may be able to find it. There's no one who can profitably, who cannot profitably read the portion assigned 50 or 100 times during the week. Read it, question it, meditate upon it until your brain sees it and you can read it intelligently in the dark. So assume the lesson is uh, dealing with like, the book of Galatians. By the end of the week, you can read the book of Galatians without opening it. There's a time when seven Adventists were called the people of the book. Is it true today? Yeah, I have seen elders who can't even explain the Sabbath to anyone. First, the elder, not even second. Tell him, dear elder, what is this thing about the Sabbath? Clueless. But if the lesson was conducted aright, <coughs> we're seeing that. Once a subject has been discussed, it will be possible for you to read it in the dark. So you don't need the Bible, you'll have it in your head. And I want to show us a, a sample of these lessons, a sample of these old lessons. I want you to, <clears throat> want to show us a sample of the, Sample of these lessons, and uh, as we continue with our study, so uh, this is a, uh, I think it's eighteen eighty eight. 
I hope the contents are here. Let me just reduce the size. So this is 1888, January 1, January 7. And uh, we are going to see something about this. I'd like us to see the notes because they've said the notes are only a help. So the format of the lessons, I believe uh, most of us should have, been, should have uh, I've already seen it, was January 7, 1888. That one was, you studied the whole week and uh, I believe it is the Sabbath that is January 7th, because the next Sabbath is seven days later, and that is January 14th. So for, for the week, the lesson is not for the Sabbath, it is the week. We see that it is just how many questions? 22. So this is something that you can wake up on Sabbath morning and quickly write the answers in go to, go to class and answer. That is conducting it the wrong way. Now, what did God do in the beginning? Genesis 1.1. God created the heavens and the earth. And you're told that the teacher is supposed to accept only answers which are given in the exact words of the, of the scripture. So on creation, it is easy enough to answer. Then there are some notes. There's some notes, let me uh, skip that one. I'm looking for one that will help us. Now, this one might not be able to help us much because uh, some of them, assuming, uh, let me give an example of, uh, assume this number six was, was, Ad, uh, was Adam deceived as to the consequences of the act? Then you'll be given this text to confirm and then there would be something like C note one. Then note one would explain more about it. So that was the lesson writer writing. But the lesson writer says, my main point is not that you read my notes. My main point is you read what the Bible says. So this is just to help you to understand. But is it that is is that what is happening today? Today the lesson writer says. Right? Today, the lesson writer says. So uh, let's also now go back and uh, consider a few things. A few things here. I hope this is big enough. So a few. It's not big enough, son. Let me just increase the point a bit. So we've said that the Sabbath school did not begin with San the Adventists. It did not begin with the General Conference. So when you come to discuss the Sabbath school today, we are not discussing about the general conference. An example, when you consider the origins of Sabbath school, uh, there's a group that we read about. Uh, you no, know, A.T. Jones wrote this. Let us just read as you continue. We that the Sunday law movement, and in fact, the whole movement in general, is directly contrary to the history. The theory, the methods, and the purposes of the movement are the opposite of those that pertain to the gospel of Christ. And that this is so, we propose to demonstrate by proofs that cannot be questioned. To begin with, we quote from Mr. Kraft's book, The Sabbath for Man, a passage from under the heading, The Improvement of Sabbath Observ Observance. It is written to show how Sunday observance can be improved, to show how that good for which the Sunday law advocates, advocates are working may be promoted. It is as follows. The best way to keep young men in Sabbath school at the very age when they need it most is to put a heads of adult classes filled with their parents between them and the door. So I put here because <laughs> you see the perversion of what they call Sunday school. 
but they call it Sabbath school, yet it is talking about Sunday school because it is proposing ways of improving what? Sunday observance. So it is Sunday school that used to be called Sabbath school. Yes, I'm just trying to show us the origins of this. So they're talking about Sunday observance and they're calling it Sabbath school. So the general conference has not much to do with the Sabbath school and you have not much to do with it as far as its beginning. Yes, also we read of a seventh day Baptist and we are told that uh, they established and successfully maintained a Sabbath school. So seven day Baptists long before seven day Adventists came had Sabbath schools. Uh, we also read about William Miller and uh, William Miller says then they once lived is comparing <clears throat> uh, this is like a debate going on about the state of the dead Revelation 20 verse 5, they live not again until the thousand years are finished. And William Miller says, but a little Sabbath school child will answer that those who are not raised in the first resurrection will not be raised until the thousand years are finished. So William Miller and his associates also had Sabbath school. So if we do away with it, we're not doing away with something that is recent. This is something that God established in the church, just like the camp meetings long before seven day Adventists came to the scene. And uh, William Foy tells us that in 1935, he, a father in Israel whom I visited at this time gave me instruction that proved a blessing to my soul. I then joined the Sabbath school. In which year? 1835. That was long before 1844. So now what is the Sabbath school? Because when you talk about Sabbath school, we may only be thinking that it is the lesson. And who are the members of the Sabbath school? It is CTC. You may be thinking that the Sabbath school is probably only for children or it is only for adults. Betty Jones wrote in 1900, I have been appointed to speak today on the Sabbath school work especially as it is at the present time. It's present work in the, in the studies now before the school. The Sabbath school work is plainly enough school work. School work for the Sabbath. It is a school that is held on the Sabbath in which instruction is given as in a school by teachers. So immediately learn that there should be teachers and you learn that the Sabbath school is school work that is conducted on the Sabbath. So, but I'll ask the question, is there a part to play during the week for the Sabbath school? Yes, Felix tells us, yes. We will uh, read from councils on Sabbath school work where we're told that every day, parents will study the lesson with their children. Uh, let me jump about over some of these and then let's spend some time considering this paragraph. We held tent meetings here nearly four weeks. One was baptized, two commenced keeping the Sabbath, a band of 19 brethren and sisters was formed and we organized a Sabbath school of three classes. Our review of the disciple minister on the law and Sabbath may result in a debate. We expect to effect a church organization here sometime this coming autumn. <clears throat> so at this time, uh, this man says that they're going to effect a church organization and they're saying one was baptized. So no elders ordained, no deacons. So there's, we can say there's no church, but there's a what? A Sabbath school of three classes. So where there's no church, there can be a Sabbath school. As Sami was teaching yesterday or today, he said if no one qualifies to take care of the church, they don't organize the church. But we see that there can be, and indeed there should be, a Sabbath school where there is no 
no church organized this year. So we see we're trying to understand the Sabbath school is more than the lesson that is being written. Sabbath school of four, four classes. So we know that uh, <clears throat> the Sabbath school were initially produced by this association here, the International Sabbath School Association, just in the same way that there was the general conference. As we saw, there was the general conference, which was separate from the Religious Liberty Association, separate from Foreign Mission Board, separate from the International Tract Society, and separate from the Medical Missionary and the Novelance Association. So all these associations, when the church was first organized, were different and doing different purposes. So what is the work of the Sabbath school? We've already read, we can just go back uh, what we, we've read and read it again. The Sabbath school is an important branch of the missionary work not only because it gives to young and old a knowledge of God's word, but because it awakens in them a love for its sacred truth. So what is its purpose? To give to the old and young a knowledge of God's work, word and to awaken in them a love for its sacred truth. And also to awaken in them a desire to study it for themselves. If you want young men and old men and women to study the Bible for themselves and not to depend on men and hearsay, then that is the purpose for which the Sabbath school is, is given. Now, this is what Sister White is saying, but let us consider someone who, who wrote before Sister White wrote this thing. So, again, this is a Foy, William Foy in 1845. That is before Sister White wrote the statement he read. He says, a father in Israel whom I visited at this time gave me instruction that proved a blessing to my soul. I then joined the Sabbath school and was there instructed for the first time to read the word of God and soon became able to read my little Bible. So in the Sabbath school, what were they taught even then? To read the word of God. It was not the lesson writer says. It was not this, this thing of taking your lesson and in two minutes on Sabbath morning you know everything inside. Then you go and pretend you want to teach. Say, my friend, I'm teaching this. And in the end, last year, we learned about Revelation. So today, go back and ask, Revelation 1.1, 1, 1, what does it mean? And no one knows. But the, 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 it is like a student who goes to university, reminds me that I applied for some welding course, yet I did engineering in university. Yes, so we went and spent five years. At the end of the five years, we realized you know nothing. But the work of the Sabbath school rightly conducted, it is going to teach people to read the Bible for themselves. When false teachers come in, Everyone will have read and everyone will know. So when they say Adventists are a people of the book, it will be the same. It seems a common place, a common, it seems a common place to say that nobody should take part in Sabbath school instruction who is not himself a constant student of the Bible, but the reminders required. So no one should take no one should be a Sabbath school teacher who is not himself a constant student of the Bible. So it was a high calling, and it should be a high calling to be a Sabbath school teacher. So the Sabbath school teacher is <clears throat> going to be help himself because he's going to study the Bible every, every day, and he himself must know the Bible. But there are some of us who think ourselves quite ready to enlighten the children when our own acquaintance with God's many colored revelation is shallow and superficial. People are now, <clears throat> we're going to see that the Sabbath school has different divisions, some for children. Here we're dealing with only with children. Our children's teachers 
Do they know anything about the Bible? I don't know if they do, but in 1902, E.J. Wagon was wondering why people do, whose acquaintance with God's word is shallow and superficial, why they think themselves competent to do what? Instruct children, because children are not just going to be told that Zacchaeus climbed a tree, and next week you tell them David killed Goliath, because those are things that even the radio can say. Yeah, open your radio on Sunday morning and you'll be able to learn those things from there. <clears throat> Proposed reforms. Uh, let me check which year this was. Uh, this was 1900, so A.T. Jones wrote the following. It has also been said already that these lessons are too tedious. So <clears throat> these lessons were being said to be too tedious. Now, we know, uh, let me just open another lesson and compare. I don't need to open it. If you open your lesson of 2021, 20, will you find the format that was there then, where there was question and answer? No. Now, as early as then, it is John was saying this lesson are too tedious. Ask a question and then answer the question by perhaps one or two words in a verse. Because the example you said was asking, what did God do in there? in the beginning to so ask a question and answer by perhaps one or two words in a verse and over and over so before you get through a single verse because a single verse must be having different uh, different yeah, yeah different things that it addresses so there'll be different questions for that so people are saying i'm going over this over they're saying it is so tedious and then they went on again to say these statements that the lessons are very dry and so tedious, when the lessons are simply the very words of scripture itself, this illustrates exactly the evil which the book of Galatians is going to correct. Now, this was, a, was commenting on the lesson about the book of Galatians. But what are people saying? They're dry and they're tedious. What did people want? And he's saying, yet these are the very words of scripture. What did God do in the beginning? God created the heaven, the exact word of scripture. <laughs> yes, so changes had to come in because people did not want the exact words of, of scripture. But we've read the statement in one of them that you're saying, the best way to learn the mind of God is to express our thoughts in the exact words in which God has given us. Those things. So there's no better way that you can express the truth in the Bible except in the exact words of, of the Bible. So uh, reforms were proposed because the lesson was tedious and the lesson was, was dry. But he says, let us not continue for a moment in a way that any of the Sabbath school lessons in the book of Galatians or in any other part of the Bible will be in any sense dry or tedious. If it has been so with us, let it not be so any longer. If it has been so with us, let it not be any longer. <clears throat> it is often the case that we hear persons give us a reason for not coming to Sabbath school. I did not have my lesson. But this answer should not be dignified with the title of reason or it is really a very poor excuse. It shows that the individual offering it does not realize the object of the school. We do not go to Sabbath school to show off our proficiency, as some people go to church to exhibit their fine clothes. We go to Sabbath school in order to learn. We are all of us ignorant to a great, greater or less degree of the truths contained in the Bible. We go to Sabbath school that we may become enlightened. To stay away from school because you are ignorant is as foolish as it would be to stay away from dinner because we are hungry. So these men were protesting, people not reading. These men were protesting, people staying away from Sabbath school. So what do you think if, if Jones was to arise today? We say if it was to arise, we would not join the church that is teaching the Trinity. But would it join? your congregation if you don't have Sabbath school. 
-hmm. What would you do if your congregation does not have Sabbath school? Mm -hmm. He would stay away and start his own Sabbath school somewhere. Now, uh, I want us to go. So we are already seeing that there is a need for it. Yeah, we are seeing its purpose, that it is going to awaken an interest in individual study of the word of God, that they shall all be taught of God. Again, in, uh, in 1883, Iziawakona said there's a lack of appreciation of the importance of the Sabbath school work as supporting discipline of mind and thorough education in the things of God. And because of this, there's a lack of thoroughness in Bible study. So there's no systematic. <clears throat> Sabbath school is designed so that we have a systematic Bible study. If it is studying the book of Galatians, it is systematic. We study it and finish. We don't start chapter 1 today, verse 1 to verse 5. And then tomorrow we jump to Ephesians chapter 2. And the next day we're in Isaiah. Now that is lack of discipline. Is it? Yeah, because even when you're in school, if you're studying biology, <clears throat> it is chapter one, you read until you finish. And then you go to Ephesians. You go to, no, you go, yeah, you go to Ephesians in CRE. Now this is William Miller. <clears throat> Again, in 1853, uh, he wrote, well, this was written in 1853. He says, in the midst of our disappointed hopes of seeing the king of glory and being made like him, and still finding ourselves in a world of sin, snares and death, the question forces itself upon us. What now is our work? So after the disappointment, he said, what now is our work? And they had many, many things. But one of the things he said, nor can we think ourselves justified in neglecting Sabbath schools and Bible class instruction. So we also ask, what now is our work? Nor can we think ourselves justified in neglecting Sabbath schools. So divisions of the Sabbath school we, we see that there's a senior division, which uh, is what we can call adult, there's intermediate, there's primary, and there's kindergarten. So children, children are captured all here. So in fact, there are more divisions for children than there are for adults. So in the Sabbath school, children must not be neglected. Children must not be let me say they must not be mixed by others, but they must also not be neglected. So if you have been focusing on adults alone, say that there's a great work to be done for, for children. So how should the Sabbath school be conducted? I will not go into how the Sabbath school was organized. We can look at it later, about the superintendent and teachers and DTC and DTC. <coughs> but Sabbath schools will have reports. Sabbath schools should give their reports of how they are, how they are going on, the members that are there and did see. One of the reports that we find is about donations. Let me read, uh, for example, I believe this is a, uh, this should be Katie Jones. Dear brethren and sisters of the Sabbath schools, the Sabbath school donations, the Sabbath school donations have for a number of years been one of the greatest helps in supporting foreign missions. Some, I don't know if a problem. Yes, you know. oh. The Sabbath school donations, let me just read because it doesn't reflect on the other side. Let me try what happens here. Stop sharing. Uh, 
uh, let me just continue as you try to fix it. It is my turn. The Sabbath school donations have, for a number of years, been one of the greatest helps in supporting foreign missions. This must be so still. Well, it, it just come back. The Sabbath school donations have, for a number of years, been one of the greatest helps in supporting foreign missions. This must be so still. It will never do to slacken this stream of means, nor divert it from the channel through uh, the channel through which has been carried such splendid help for foreign fields. Yet we find that some of our Sabbath schools are using all the regular Sabbath school donations for the expenses of the school itself or for the support of the church school or other homework, thus diverting these donations wholly from foreign work. This is not only crippling the foreign work, but it is hurting, it is shutting off the giving of much that would otherwise be given. <clears throat> so there's a Sabbath school offering for Sabbath school donation. And when it is conducted aright with the number of Sabbath schools that are there, there'll be a lot of funds that will be available for, for foreign work. Now, uh, I'm just quickly going through this and uh, I'll go back to the PowerPoint so we can see a few things from Sister White. At what time on Sabbath should Sabbath school lessons be studied? Well, let us just go through this and see what was done. Sabbath morning at 8.30, Brother Prescott gave one of the best Bible studies I've ever had. So at 8.30, there was a, a Bible study. Then at 11 o'clock, Sister White spoke with her usual power and solemn impressiveness. At 2 o'clock, the Sabbath school lesson was studied. So is, can the Sabbath school lesson be studied at 2 o'clock? It's at two o'clock, the Sabbath school lesson was studied. So you can study the lesson in the afternoon at three o'clock to see it. So that is in one instance. But then you also find the following. Uh, what I have on my screen is not yet there. So you just read it. This one says the congregation of seven Adventists that has hitherto been worshipping in the Athenium will hereafter, until further notice, meet in Duncombe Hall. Services will be held every Sabbath at 11 a.m., Sabbath school at 9.45 a.m. So can Sabbath school be held at 9.45 a.m.? Yes. And can it be held at 2 p.m.? Yes. yes. So there's no fixed time that we say Sabbath school must be at? at such and such a time. Yes, so I was going to say some of the things we're doing are because of Tradition. It's just a moment as I try to fix. You'll see that depending on the circumstance, it will be. Uh, that is where we are. Sabbath school at 9.45 a.m. The other time in Sabbath school at? At 2 o'clock. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, how to study? Now we have, we've already seen briefly some of the things that were given, but uh, here we have the following. Thoroughly review the entire lesson in the following month. 
though he says that this is just a, a suggestion. So this is one of the suggestions. Ask the questions as found in the lesson quarterly. Call upon different ones. Now, the, <clears throat> this is uh, to lesson teachers. Because what you have, uh, let me just go back to the lesson that we, were, we had up here. So if you are a lesson teacher, and this is all that you have, question one to question number 22, how do you study it? Yes, so how do you study it? They just, yes, so ask the question. Ask the questions as found in the lesson quarterly. Call upon different ones to give a synopsis of the lesson or the lesson story in their own language. Yes. So ask everyone to give a synopsis of the lesson in their own language. So if, yes. Yes, yes. So how you can read meaning you must have read and known what is there. So it is not something that you wake up on Sabbath morning and rush through. You must have read and known. And <clears throat> we'd already read that accept answers only that are given in there. Exact words of the scriptures. So your own language should be as close because error is allowed. There's room for error. But it should be <laughs> in the exact words. So you're saying you should have memorized the script. Yes. Shall memorize the scripture, not only the scripture, but again also the points expressed. Yes. Have the references given by different ones and have those texts repeated that have been committed to memory. Now, because it might not be uh, possible for everyone to commit the whole passage to memory, then have now this is an adult class. So it is not the lesson writer says but it is weekly. What did you commit to memory? And you recite. And deacons and DTC. So when I want to debate what Brother X in the general conference is thinking, and that is not the scripture, then give each one the privilege of questioning others upon the lesson. Yes, so in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. What does it mean in the beginning? What does that beginning mean? And people discuss. Do you see anything about, about lesson writer? No, but it is the Bible. Now I believe this is why, <clears throat> let me just jump in the slides and come back here. I want to show you something in the slide that I found. I was studying some subject on the judgment and I found the following. Now this is a, it is not yet up. It is coming very slowly. Yes, so I believe we know this pastor. Yes, now this is John Lamacon. <coughs> the judgment hour, John Lamacon. March 2018. So he says, allow me to introduce you to one of the most ignored commandments of all time, the third commandment. The Bible says in Exodus 20 and verse 3, together you shall have no other gods. Now this is a pastor and what is he saying is the third commandment? <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> <laughs> to prove that this was not a mistake, it was not a slip of the tongue, because uh, the time the time stamp there is hidden. But he continues on and on, and Father at a different time says, "The third commandment answers the question: Who is your God?" 
Now the third commandment is you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. It answers nothing about Israel. So this man was surely convinced that the third commandment is why is this the case? Now this is a pastor. What about common church members? <laughs> yeah, they also answered that that is the third man. Yeah. Now these are us who are said to be a people of the truth. Review practical truth of the lesson. Now this is an example. We are continuing to learn how you can be able to teach this on the Sabbath. What do you do on the Sabbath? Because on the Sabbath, people have already studied. So review practical truths of the lesson. Repeat all the texts committed to memory and relate personal experiences in which the truths of the lesson have been found. So there's an important thing for us here to know. Re relate personal experiences in which the truths of the lesson have been found. Helpful. So you can give a testimony. There's a truth given in the word of God. Let us say, for example, when Christ says, therefore do not worry about what you eat or what you drink. You can give an experience where that thing is practical. Now the two extremes, the one extreme says, we must only be robots and repeat what is in the scripture. The other one says, we will say, I went to Harambe on Sabbath. <laughs> because even Harambe is the work of God. Yeah. So we are seeing we relate testimonies and experiences because the lesson is supposed to be also practical. But they say this, of course, is just but a suggestion. You should be able to find uh, the best way to accomplish it. After each chapter has been studied, encourage each member of the class to express in few words the leading thoughts of the chapter and by frequent reviews fix this topic in mind. If parents will do this for themselves and then help their children to do it, making it, instead of the gossip of the day, a common subject of conversation in the homes, much good might be, much good might be accomplished. <clears throat> and we've of course seen uh, some of the quotes that you had, but uh, allow me again to go to one of them that was written by one of them that was written by I'm looking for the best of one since I've lost it. I will just go back there shortly. <clears throat> that was written by By Wagona. I just I will, I will look for it shortly. Just give me a moment. <coughs> So this is a, the following, let me just bring it to the screen. I want to read this paragraph. just starting from here. The ideal Bible student is not the one who can tell the most about the Bible, but the one who has stored his mind with the precious thoughts of God and is able to express them readily in the very words in which God has, has expressed them. This method of study makes it possible that they shall all, they shall be all total of God. For it is when we consider what God says as he says it, that he can give us understanding and the Holy Spirit is appointed to this very work. 
those who are skeptical as to this method of Bible study are asked to give it a fair trial in the study of this book. That was the lesson. Do not consider any lesson properly prepared until the questions will admit of being answered in the words of the text set apart for the lesson can be readily answered in the exact words of the text without looking at the printed text. This cannot be accomplished by a hasty reading of the lesson a short time before the Sabbath school. So those who are skeptical, it is because the church has been skeptical, that is why they have changed. So the format that was there before is not, and you are not required to answer anything in the words of scripture. So those who are skeptical, we are asked to give it a fair trial and see the results. So uh, let me quickly <clears throat> Let me quickly finish upon this, and then you can look what the story says. So there's a Sabbath school lesson that you study and do what? And recite. The house was so full, instead of reciting by classes, all joined in a study of the lesson of the Santo. So what is this reciting? You give a synopsis of what you you learn. So we're not merely going to ask these questions. What did God do in the beginning? And we say in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. What did he do on the first day? He created this and he created the lesson is done. Let us go on. But everyone was supposed to recite what they had done what? What they had learned. Let me skip this to the teachers and go back to this as we come to an end so that there can be time for questions. Oh. <clears throat> we can uh, reconsider again the text that we were reading in John 6.45 that they shall all be taught of God, John chapter 6, verse 45. Now, Sister White says the following in uh, Desire of Ages, page uh, 370, 387, paragraph 5. In the words, they shall all be taught of God. Jesus referred to the prophecy of Isaiah, all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. This scripture the Jews appropriated to themselves, it was their boast that God was there. So the text that they shall all be taught of God means that God is their teacher. So God can literally be the teacher of some people. But how will God be your teacher when the person that you are listening to is, to, is you are listening to is a, and not a man sent by God, but a man sent by by the purpose, and the purpose is sent by, by Satan. So God cannot be our teacher when we are, we are listening to a man. Now in Hebrews chapter eight, they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, but who shall teach them? The Lord. Now though we know that this points to some future time, yet it is also true that it can be said they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man is brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me, because they shall have been taught by, by the Lord. Yes, I believe we can uh, just. And just bring it to a close at that point so that there can be room for questions and uh, yeah, so there can be room for questions and uh, comments. So we can have a word of prayer. Thank you.
Our Father who dwells in heaven above, we thank thee for the day that you gave to us. We thank thee for the gifts that you sent to us, for food and for fulfilling all your promises that you sent away. We ask, dear Lord, that you as you continue studying and discussing and learning, you may lead us to the right path. You may indeed be our teacher. You may teach us to humble ourselves before thee, that you may know how to hear thy voice. We pray that you may save us from the two extremes, which you have said that it is in human nature to run to and from one extreme to another entirely opposite. Pray that you may help us to walk and be sure that we're walking in the right way. This is my prayer in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.